Hey there, I'm Kate and this is Monocat. In the last two videos of the series, we talked about how to adjust your gear and wheel to the winter season. In this final video, we will look at how to adjust your riding style to different surfaces and your environment. So, let's get this started. When going for a ride in the winter, it's good practice to adjust your riding style to the conditions, as you will have less grip if the surfaces are wet or icy. So even before leaving, it's good to plan in more time for your ride. And if you leave late, just accept that you'll be late and don't try to rush, as it's not worth slipping out on ice. Regardless of where you ride, it's good to change your general riding style in the winter time and be more careful. For that you want to focus on going in straight lines and take wide turns, to avoid slipping out. For the turns, instead of leaning your wheel, try to keep your wheel as upright and vertical as possible. It's better to turn with your upper body, which will also automatically result in wider turns, but therefore they will be more stable. In addition to that, it's good to stay loose on the wheel. Don't force it to go a specific way and let the wheel steer for you in the case there will be some train tracking due to ice and snow. As with all types of vehicles, it's good to remember that your braking distance will be increased. So having a bigger gap between you and other road users is important. When it comes to the acceleration, here as well it's better to take it slow. If you try to accelerate quickly and aggressively, you might slip out if the wheel doesn't have enough grip. Additionally, having side pads can you help to stay on the wheel and have more connection points with it to control it better. Just make sure that you are not locked in too tightly because if you fall, you still want to be able to get off the wheel and fall separately without being stuck to it. If you want to know more about which side pads to use in general, you can check out my video where I talk about different types of side pads. What are your ways to adapt your riding style for the winter weather? Let me know in the comments. Also, the surface of different types of paths can change a lot in the winter, so keep that in mind when planning your trip. Especially in this time of the year, it's even more important to bring your attention to the environment and the surfaces you ride on. Even though snow is one of the first things that comes to mind when thinking about the cold weather, wet leaves and ice are a much bigger problem. Fresh snow will most likely just slow you down a little and reduces your ability to maneuver. Once the snow starts to melt down and then freeze again as ice, this is where the trouble begins. With ice being less obvious to see, it's good to look out for reflections, so you can spot it earlier. This is why it's also good to keep your front light on, even during the day, as well as adjusting your riding style and being more careful and not making quick turns. So, in case you don't see the ice on the road, you'll be less likely to slip. Reflections can be helpful to spot the ice, but at the same time they might blind you unexpectedly. With the white snow or water reflecting the light, it can get very bright at times. And with the sun being low in the sky, it's a good idea to change your visor to a tinted one or wear sunglasses during the daytime. In the winter, snow and ice are often accumulating on the sides of all types of paths, causing them to become more narrow. This makes overtaking and passing oncoming traffic, especially on bike paths, more difficult. In addition to that, bike paths that are on the right lane of the road are also often obstructed, since snowplow trucks push the snow to the side of the road. Because of that, it is safer to drive on a clear lane with other cars, as you are less likely to slip and fall. Here PEVs have a great advantage over bicycles, as they are able to keep up with the speed of the traffic, which makes cars less likely to overtake and reduces the risk for you getting sideswiped. In my experience from riding EUC in Warsaw and Vancouver, riding on bike lanes might be the safest option during the summer, but in the winter they tend to be the last type of path to be cleared from snow and ice. If they get cleared at all. 
So going on the road or very slowly on the sidewalk might be a better and safer alternative. Regardless of which road you're going to ride on, it's important to keep other road users in mind. Just like you, they will need a bigger braking distance or pedestrians might walk in unpredictable paths as they try to avoid the icy patches, just like you. Another good reason for why you should keep more distance to other road users is that their tires will spray more dirt and mud at you due to the wet roads. With all the different hazards of riding in the winter, it can be discouraging to go for a ride. But there are also great upsides if you keep riding in the cold season. The changes in the environment will challenge you to adapt your riding style to all types of different scenarios and forces you to keep practicing your riding abilities. The conditions of your usual path can look different sometimes every day, with snow, ice and wet leaves appearing and changing their spot each day. This will later on help you even in the summer to manage sudden changes or different surfaces. Also with the longer braking distance, you will become more aware of how much space you will need in order to brake. And once the roads are dry again, you'll be able to emergency brake much quicker as you have more grip. Additionally, going out for a EOC ride in those limited sunshine hours of the day is a good reason to leave your house, be active and get some fresh air in. Especially if you miss riding your motorcycle in the winter, an EOC can be a great substitute for that. As they can go on all types of paths, you are not forced to ride as fast as on a motorcycle, so you won't be getting as cold as well. And if the conditions suddenly change and you're not able to ride due to heavy rain, snow or ice, EOCs are one of the most portable options, so you can easily hop on public transport and you'll be able to take your EOC with you. And you won't have to abandon your car and get it later or carry a heavy scooter around. And even if you're fully prepared to take on the winter, there might be some days where you will feel uncomfortable or not ready to go on a ride. On those days, consider taking public transport instead until the conditions become more ideal. That's what I did as well when it started snowing in Vancouver for the first time, as I had no idea how well the streets and bike paths would be cleared. With that being said, I hope you could get some ideas of how to make the most out of the cold season and keep riding your EOC. Once again, I want to mention EVs as they give me the opportunity to keep working on my videos. I couldn't be happier working with them. So if you want to show EVs that you want more of my content and you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and if you feel really fancy, you might subscribe. See you next time.